I think it was his experiences in jail. He saw a lot of other people. He was only one of thousands of people who were arrested without any basis during martial law. And he knew that unless people like him did something, nobody would fight that government. My father's personality, if you would talk to his classmates, even when he was in college, from what I've heard, they would say, he's a bulldog. So I think it was also part of his personality that you know he felt that uh, you push me to the wall, I will push back. I'm not just going to run away and with, with my tail between my legs. And that has been, I guess, it's part of our family history in the sense that my great-grandfather was a, a general in the Revolutionary Army. So we tend not to back down when it comes to a fight. Kasi nung lumabas siya, wala pang plug na eh. But that was one of the first things he did, yata, to form yung human rights group na yun. And kasama niya yata dyan, sina JBL, sina Joker, Tani. And kaya nag-gravitate kami doon. Ito yung pagka-release siya na nung sometime in 74. He immediately went to work, accepted cases for free involving many of those that Marcos wanted to keep in jail and he did his best to get them out of jail if he could. Yeah. Aside from that, he did a lot of organizing work because he realized, he, when, he did, when he established FLAG, he, he realized that if I just do this the traditional way, it's not going to help, it might even make the situation worse. If I give legal aid and I give it to the ordinary problems of the poor, that poor have many problems, even in terms of their, their poverty and all that. Um, will it really be helping develop this society or not? And, and that coupled with the real realization that just as the law at the time was being used to maintain oppression, he said, I can, we can also use the law to liberate people from oppression. Yun ang naging philosophy niya sa flag. So every single opportunity, every case became an opportunity to expose the injustice of the government. And he utilized not just legal tactics, meaning inside the court, but what we call meta-legal tactics. He went international, he got a deal of many international groups, from Amnesty International to some United Nations uh, agencies. And in that manner, he was able to put a lot of pressure on, on the Marcos government. So, doon kami nag-gravitate, yung mga uhugi na uh, tagaabot ng folder ng mga elders. And then later on, we wanted, I mean, we the lawyers, wanted to take a stand on national issues. Pero si Ka Pepe would rather na talagang traditional lawyering lang, yung human rights, usgado. And that was why we founded Mabini. But yung our fraternal ties, then, up to now, remained uh, very tight. When I was young, when I was 13, but the situation was very, very different because it was martial law, I also used to go with my, my dad to court. Ang kaibahan, I would go with him to the military court. I see that 1974, 1975, karamihan ng kaso niya were all in the military tribunals. So I would wear a polo barong, proudly carry his bag, and on several occasions, I was even allowed to sit in the council's table. So you can imagine a 13-year-old boy. But I never got bored uh, in court. Talagang it was so fascinating to me. Yung kaso namin sa Military Commission Number no. 6, tila ang pinadadala niya noon, uh, if my memory is true, si J.J. Justiniano yata. Oh, si eh, 
na with the CC but also with the prosecution <laughs> dito sa yeah, si JJ and uh, ang ano ang titino ng kasi uh, I'm I met so many of the noted joke no boys, no? Garcia Torena, Benny Payo, Romy Callejo, my classmate who became a justice. Ang, ang galing ng training nila kay Kapepe. Dahil yung people versus women do David, eventually napasa sa akin yun eh. Nako, anak ng huwe, ang daming folders, pero very systematic ang pag-arrange ka, Pepe. Trial brief. Ang, li ang linaw, li pag nag-take over ka, no matter how complicated, everything was made easy for you. Talagang iba sila ni eh, yung mga tipo, no, kung mag-prepare. Very systematic, very easy to follow. Officer, I wanna He was representing you. some of the top um, detainees at the time, those who were labeled by the government as being you know, enemies of the, of the state and all of that. And these were cases that were very, very well covered, even if the media was restricted then. A lot of people were, were paying attention to what was happening there. But of course, these were courts only in name because the judges there were military officers. And it was martial law. Marcos was exercising his powers as commander-in-chief. So, pagka may utos si Marcos noon, siyempre susunod yung mga judges ng military court. Well, abogado ko siya no? nung hinuli ako ni Marcos noong 1974. Kasama si Senator Tanyada at saka si Joker Arroyo. Ang maliwanag doon, I'm not saying uh, I can claim no? na kami lang ang represent. Pero lahat ng mga the worst of times, ng pinaka-dangerous times, si KPP, never failed no? to be there uh, lumaban kaya nga nabuo natayo yung flag no? specifically to represent people na talagang pinatarget nung diktadura nung panahon yun no, when the flag was founded it it was the first one dahil yung ganun kasi we kept bumping into one another sa City Hall. Kaya, tatandaan ko, minsan nanalo si Jojo ng kaso. Niya po siya ng kliyente. Salamat, attorney. Iyak nang iyak na. Inabutan ng uh, bill. Takbo si Jojo sa CR. Two pesos. <laughs> Pero remember, 37 pesos, ano na, centavos ang isang litro ng gasolina. Kaya, uh, may value. But uh, that was what we went through. Talagang, in many of the cases that we handled, uh, kami pa nagbibigay ng pamerienda at pamasaya ng kliyente. Dahil mga walang malayan, tinorture, etc. Kaya ang pag-uwi, ang gano'n, no? sige, uh, mag-gano'n muna tayo, mag tayo, Pepsi. And then, inaabutan pa namin ng pamasaya. Eh, hindi kami uh, hindi pro, bo, um, pro bono puro bono hindi kami abogado abunado but we enjoyed it but the psychic satisfaction of doing what you were convinced was right and also for the future of your children it, it, that was the lift of the driving dream that animated our group. And then, like I said, important na you had to have a wife na supportive. Kaya malaking, ano yun, malaking bagay, kaya kami nagtagal. Oh yes, there was a lot of respect. And, and even if they knew that, that their bosses would you know, didn't like it, uh, there were certain occasions, I recall, when my father would enter a court and it would be the judge who would stand rather than the other way around. Diba? Dapat yan, pag napasok ng judge, everyone should stand in respect. But, you know, my, my dad was a very humble person and he didn't also like it that uh, people would, would do that. He would also tell them. <laughs> you could tell that he, he, he didn't enjoy that kind of thing. 
but I, I suppose his experiences as a young man going to court with his father must have had a, an impact on his desire to become a lawyer later on because I'm sure it affected me also.